now to meet some of the stars of New Ireland TV. The bulk of the fiction work that's been presented so far has been delivered by Frontier Pictures, with their in-house director Thomas Pollock assuming the director's chair for the stirring dramas like The Narrow Escape of Slugger O'Toole. Sinister crime sagas like Belfast Calibre 9 and jilted comedy like Jackalope. Let's see, do you recognise anyone? It is sad. The only one I had for comfort was my little rabbit Flopsy. My little sidekick. He takes his lead from the cinematic masters of the 20th century and has always pushed the boundaries of the conventions of genre cinema. I asked him more about that. I think it's just very fun to play with the genre. With something like Belfast Calibre 9, you know, the crime genre is something that I've always enjoyed. And, and cra noir and thrillers. I just play them with the tropes. Um, I find very interesting. Obviously, it's very easy to make something very generic. Um, but there's something about genre films that create a kind of cult and atmosphere. A bit like horror films, which is you know, the most popular of genre pieces but um i don't know i'm fascinated especially with westerns and stuff as well i think it's, it's playing with those iconographies and the things people recognize in the stories i don't like playing with genre and spinning expectations or hamming it up and you know making it satirical so i think that's one thing i enjoy about it like one of his most trusted actors is andrew mcneil who has taken leading roles in many of thomas's productions i suppose it's a challenge you get the experience a lot of different worlds different settings Having to do a lot of research if you're playing something like a cowboy, if you're a gangster or something like that, they're set in the 20s, things like that, or playing even something like an IRA man during the War of Independence. You get to really dig into the, the time, the place, and the set, and then that really helps to inform your work in that sense, you know. In fact, their creative partnership goes further than that, as Andrew partnered with Bruno Santillo to write Belfast Calibre 9, the director's cut of which had its world premiere on New Ireland TV. Yes, uh, I wrote the screenplay based off the story that Bruno Santillo had written. So, but all like the stuff, I, it's quite unusual for the stuff I would write. Usually, it's more historical in nature, as I've said. Yeah. I, I would have either went into film and acting, or would have went into history. I, I was going to actually study it at uni, but uh, things took another turn. I ended up going to study film instead. But even since then, it's it's been always a part of the stuff I've done. It's always been what interests me, being able to actually explore history through the work that I do in acting. It's kind of combining both passions into one. And is it more difficult or liberating to direct someone else's script? It's a good question because there's a lot of director writers out there, you know, and um, a lot of them find it very difficult. They don't understand how to like take someone else's work. It's sometimes more rewarding. And in fairness, there's a lot of directors that don't actually write anything. I mean, Hitchcock was known, but for a more recent example, Ron Howard never actually wrote screenplays, and and still doesn't. And he said this briefly in one of his master classes. It was refreshing to hear his perspective because it's very similar to myself that you know you you make that work your own in some way you, you see some kind of shape to it and it's you're almost more of a script editor in that sense i'm always i always work better trying to deconstruct someone's work and analyze the script and see something in it that i want to place in it and that's all down to script analysis and i think you'll learn a lot more as a director and a filmmaker by being able to have those skills because it's very easy for a director to know what they want to do when they've written it but it's an even, it's an even bigger skill to take someone else's work and bring that to the screen you know okay. while also bringing a lot to it okay. you know i like to think we're a pretty good team at this point we're Absolutely. just kind of on the same level on basically every aspect so not really um I, i'm not one of these people i well, like to think not anyway you can crack me otherwise <laughs> if i'm overprotective of my work I, I like to keep it loose a lot of the time, even in terms of dialogue, just as long as it serves the story, that's the important thing, ultimately. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of writers are like that as well with the work they're scared to take at the director, and because a lot of directors sometimes do, you just want to take the script and kick the writer out. It's like your baby. I've kind of felt like it, you know, but you have to let the you have to let the director do what they're doing. But it's just about finding that balance and working with the writer and having them show that, That's why we work so well together. We don't agree on everything, you know. Don't don't get me wrong, but like we. It's all art as compromise, you know? But uh, most of the time we're similar taste and similar vision for things anyway, and it usually does work out. When you find that kind of combination, there's a reason why you get these combinations of like Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, or Scorsese working with the same actors. There's a reason people do that, and it's about working up that rapport. So it's just, it's always beneficial. Thomas finished his filmmaking studies at Montana State University in the United States, where there was a different cultural outlook towards filmmaking. 
Yeah, I mean, I was there for nine months and um, studied fiction and non-fiction production and directing. And this was back when it was 20, 21. I've learned some, I've definitely learned more after that. Um, I feel like I've just matured much more since. But you can see a difference in obviously work ethic. Um, compared to also university campus, I, I can't speak too much for Queens, but like, there's a big difference with the way people were, were treating the work and the quality of the, the work. It just, when I went there, I was just like, whoa. I have a lot to do. I have a lot to catch up on, you know. And uh, definitely, it was it was a lot better just being around the Americans to see. Just it was just better taught, you know what I mean. You get what you pay for. It was it was a very good course, and the study directly specifically was fantastic because there's nowhere over here you can do that unless it's an actual film school. And was approached by Los Angeles screenwriter Scott Fivelson, resulting in the Hitchcock-esque screwball comedy Dial L for Latchkey which premiered in Belfast's renowned Accidental Theatre Space in Shaftesbury Square. Yeah, that was, uh, it was a good fun one. Obviously, we're both fans of Alfred Hitchcock's work, and it was unique given it was something that he approached us with. It wasn't uh -huh, yeah. a lot of the theatre work yeah. I've done before has been people reviving old plays, such as things like I've done with like the Glass Menagerie and things like that. Um, so it was very interesting, especially getting to play. The character I played was Detective Lieutenant John School, who was a blind detective, so that presented quite an interesting physical challenge in the fact that I had to play a, a blind character. I have a mild visual impairment myself, not into that scale, obviously, but so what I did for the part, I think I did in the edition as well, actually stuck a pair of sunglasses on, actually closed my eyes during it, and did a lot of prep just walking about my living room with my eyes shut and just trying to like you actually figure out how to use a cane. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, by the end of it, like whenever we were doing the performances, by the end we did a good bit of rehearsal, I was able to, I was somehow able to get about stage without having to open my eyes the entire time. And it added a lot to it. it, it's very immersive. I don't know if I really have a preference, I like both for different reasons. Especially coming from a film background originally, I think I like film more in that reason, especially writing for film as well, the stuff I've written so far. Who knows, maybe I'll write a play at some point, but at the minute I'm very much writing for film. So I, I like, I enjoy aspects of both, certainly with theatre, being able to run the entire thing in real time. And also that adrenaline rush off, like nothing can go wrong, obviously, because whereas with film, it's nice in a sense, it's more relaxed because you have that safety net yeah. where you can always call cut, but then having to jump in the middle of a scene at a high emotional moment thing. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a co-production between me and, and Rachel Coffey at the time. Um, and I kind of focused on directing Leading the Witness, which Andrew was in. And then the second play was, she focused more on that and it was the more, like, it was the more Hitchcockian one to be fair. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the only piece of theatre I've done. Um, once I started considering to do another one, COVID was starting to happen. And um, but there, I would like to take a stab at theatre again. But film is definitely my medium. Is you know, more, more to the, like, I enjoy the, the focusing on actors. You know, because I am an actor's director. I try to be the best I can, and still learning. Because um, that's what it's. It's just that it should be the major focus. But everyone's so technical these days. 